Thank you, Patrick. Thank you all for joining. My name is Dean Hanley. We're going to look at the global futures industry today at 50,000 feet, what you might call the big view. We're going to focus on 1,044 futures trade services. This includes trade rooms, trade sites, trade programs, education, mentorships, whatever. I'm going to focus then down on Global Trade Titans rooms that I was fortunate enough to find early on that trade truthfully, transparently, and profitably, and I'll give you some idea why that's so important and how I measure it. And one of the earliest Trade Titans I found, the Equity Management Academy. So here we go. My background. Biology, Masters, PhD in Science. More science, some more science. Scientific publications, scientific patents. Scientists study the biological and chemical laws of Mother Nature, and Mother Nature never lies. So scientists are not particularly good at detecting manipulation or deceit. As you will see in the futures industry, those two and many other forms of marketing maneuvers are used commonly. I did get a feeling about marketing when I got my MBA at BU. We studied cyber marketing, the same methods that these rooms use, and cyber marketing, or any kind of marketing in general, wants you to buy, purchase, consume, and spend. I went to law school and graduated. I'm getting my master's in information technology. None of what I learned at school was directly applicable to trading futures, and none of it helped me succeed. I can convince you of that. I bought two packages in 2009 and 2011 that seemed to glisten with success, but failed as soon as I took them out of the box. I had signed away a contract that pre prevented any form of reimbursement. I lost that money and I lost my accounts trading them. I had failed. I wasn't sure why. I knew I wasn't alone. When you look up the reasons that futures traders fail, there are 10. And actually 10 is the most common number of reasons that we fail. Not 11, not 9, but 10. All the reasons are our fault. Poor management. Poor plan. Blah, blah, blah. Where I come from in the university system, if 91% of the students fail an exam, or 95% fail the entire course, we blame the teacher, not the students. But here, it was all back on us. I looked for some explanation that said, you bought garbage. That's worthless. Everyone knows that strategy stinks. <laughs> that wasn't out there. So I began a systematic review. You now know the sites, the number of sites out there is very large and growing, but not defined. It's not regulated either by any of the industries. I used empirical observation, prospective studies. I sat down, I paid attention, I watched what they did, I recorded. I took hundreds of trials, usually for a day, for years. Unworthy rooms taught me what to avoid, and most of them were unworthy, by the way. I only found one in a hundred or so that I found it was worthy and had the criteria that I felt desirable. I spent more time with them. You could consider me a talent scout. I certainly was an accountant. And by virtue of some of the maneuvers out there, I had to turn to an ethics and compliance officer just to keep up with them. All to answer these questions. And I didn't know what the answer was, by the way, when I started, I just knew the question. So this is what my computer looked like every morning. Four different rooms. And at the end of two, three, four days, four more rooms. And then at the end of two, three, four days, four more rooms. And at the end of a couple of months, a lot of rooms. At the end of about four years, all of them. I published along the way. In Future's Truth, a magazine which allows 
authors like myself to put specific facts in and exact comparisons. Most other journals scrub them out. In January of last year, 2015, the first paper I published was 667 Futures Trade Rooms. Three months later, 722. Three months later, 894. Three months later, 1,000. And just last week, 1,044. So the industry is growing. And we're going to spend some time on the Odyssey. With these many new rooms and the growth in the industry, if you spent a single day with each site, you'd be behind by the end of the year. You couldn't keep up. They grow too fast. In addition, if you run a search, Google search for live futures trading rooms or futures trading rooms or oil trading or good trading rooms or successful, we get a 500 page search, but we know that most consumers, ourselves included, stop at page one. Actually, the first half of page one, we don't go on. Now, many of the rooms know this, they are aware of it, and they know that they, a goldfish has the attention span of about nine seconds. A consumer about eight seconds, that includes us. So we're called digital goldfish. So they know that they have to capture our attention in quickly and hold it. They must galvanize interest in us. And this is the, the, the odyssey goes towards that maneuver. First one is to use animals. Consumers in general relate well to animals. We like the Clydesdale horses for Budweiser. We like the gecko, geico lizard. We like the Aflac duck. These animals have human characteristics, which we call anthropomorphism. They're easy to relate to. So it might be easy to believe that Cobra Trading, Viper Systems, and Falcon Global have properties of speed or accuracy or even deadly. Fox Trade might be cunning. Rhino, tough. Gorilla, big. Panda, is his actual last name, but he uses it anyway. Wolf is his last name, he uses it anyway. I'm not sure what blue crow means or lizard, but I do know that night owls speaks for the time that they trade at night. And rat, rat traders was an experiment where rats were taught to trade futures more effectively than futures traders. And of course, there's always the watchful Bengali tiger. Those are animals. Don't like animals? You can trade with a god. Alpha Wave trades with God's vision. Trading faith trade with God's rhythm. Trade for Jesus, only trade with Jesus. Wizard, futures wizards, well, they have wizards, and the E mini wizard has a secret code of the Illuminati. Grail traders, well, they have the Grail. First wave has voodoo lines, and voodoo trading has both voodoo and gypsy trading, so you can choose. The James 16 group presents in apostolic overtones, and their testimony says that they have been a salvation from trader's hell. Magic Trader University, well, everything's magic. And be a trading god today, well, that just sums it up. So, how about a round of lightning bolts for everybody? Don't want to trade with a uh, god? You can trade with a planet. Astrology, as opposed to astronomy, is a study area that says that the planets, celestial bodies, influence mankind, influence what he does, what he thinks, influence his finances, influence his financial decisions, influence his futures trading. So they trade on the basis of planets, planet alignments, Planet crosses, the moon for connection, for example, galactic trader. All these use some form of Saturn and Jupiter and Mars and Venus alignment. 
So you can trade with a plan. And if you don't believe me, you can get a hold of the Cosmic Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and ask them what's up, and they'll tell you. Don't want to trade with a planet? How about trading with a warrior? These sites all speak to a kind of an aggressive, predatory warrior mentality. Fierce trading, mercenary, samurai. Samurai Training Academy has no samurai, no academy. There's no weapons at all. Savage doesn't seem to be that way. Spartan and stealth, yeah, not so much. Warrior Trading says take the leap. Okay, and Warrior Trading Room is just that. But again, none of these have any weapons or any kind of combative principles. If you don't like the Warrior, how about Zen? Zen trade, Zen dance, Zen trader. They somewhat talk about being patient and waiting. We all do that anyway. There's really no Zen in the Zen traders, but it has a nice ring to it. And of course, none of these rooms have a track record. And one last thing that's very diverse that these rooms use is image. Image, image cells, for example. You see here sterling profits, young man, well-dressed, well-groomed, at work, feet up on his desk, smoking. What do you think? Think he's successful? Big boys finance. Oh, okay. Georgia Anderson's a futures trader. Do you think she needs that swimsuit picture? Futures trader 71. Shaken, not stirred. What does a bond woman have to do with futures trading? FOB.com has a new application shown right here between these two young ladies. Can you see it? Virgin trader. All right. Tipped off and it's a site that gives you information on futures trading. Do you see anything unusual here? Not her. Floppy disk. Who uses a floppy disk? So if I don't like any of that, what do I look for? This. A track record. Number of trades. Contracts per trade. Profit loss per trade. By day, by week, by month, by year. Truthful and forthright. How do you know it's truthful? You sit in the room. You track the trades calibrate the profits and make sure the track record is truthful. The government says that past performance doesn't equal future. Okay. But it does equal past. It's 100% predictive of past. And past is good. It gives me like a, like a batting average. I can use that. You mean to tell me if you look at a room that averages $100 per trade over a year, versus another room that averages $20 per trade over the year, you don't know what to do. You are not informed. Secondly, I ask the question, do they net $50,000 a year on three contracts of trade? All 1,044 rooms say they're successful. All of them say something like earn extra income. When I ask them how much, they don't know. They'll say be financially successful. All right, how much? Mm, don't know. You can become financially independent. Oh, okay, how much? I don't know. So I chose this. Why 50000 a year? It's a median salary in the United States for the last two years. It's a good place to start. Not too much, not too little. Why three contracts to trade? From my experience in the rooms that I've evaluated, you can't do it on two or one. It's just too hard. Three stuff but two or one are really hard. And you can wait. 50000 a year on a 1250 contract is the same thing as 20000 a year on a $5 contract, and so on. And thirdly, do they show their trades in real time? I think this is the single greatest, most difficult, most demanding expectation of a head trader. They can tell you, type out what they're doing in text. They can narrate it. 
they can use a price chart or DOM. DOM rides with mom, not DOM with home. All four will tell you what's going on. The price chart and the DOM let you know exactly what's happening because you can see their entries and exits. The other two you have to rely on communication. You cannot verify, but nevertheless, it doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means it's a different form of communicating. I want trades that are communicated to me so I can understand and replicate, so I can mirror trade them, shadow trade them. I don't want trades that are blinking you miss trades. So if you ask for a track record, you define successful trading as 50K a year. That's 1K a week, 200 hours a day roughly. And you want them to show their trades in real time. You go from 1,044 rooms down to 15. And these rooms I call trade titans. They are truthful, transparent, and profitable. And here they are in ascending alphabetical order. We're going to focus on this one for today. Now you understand how this room fits into the overall picture. Equity Management Academy has a live signal room, a live trading room. I was in it for several many months. And Patrick has developed this very unique, mathematically balanced proprietary trading tool, which harnesses or incorporates several different mathematical algorithms. It's quite complex. It goes back years, and he's really well versed in it. His tool on any given day for any given trade or index will give you four signals. Go long, sell short, stay neutral, don't, or just wait to get in. So in reality, in spite of its complexity and diversity, it translates to a very simple, straightforward instructions. This is a screenshot of his um, profits track record in July of 2015. He was at 2000 $299,000, almost $300,000. By the end of the year, is at four sixty one. dollars He went from two ninety nine dollars to $461,000. Remarkable achievement. He trades silver. And I can tell you, mathematically speaking, that over the last two years, Patrick has made more money per contract in silver than any room I've seen ever. It is immensely accomplished in silver. I call him the Silver King. He's very good at gold. Now, oil and Russell, securities and options. He does day trading, swing, and position. And they're all live. You can't ask for anything more. Except, oh yeah, he does very well at what he trades. This is his track record. This is what I like. The date of the entry the time of the entry, and the entry price. And you have the exit date, the exit time, and the exit price, and of course, the final profit loss. But I want you to recognize that this is only one contract per trade. I normalize all rooms to three. Some rooms trade one, some trade two, some trade three, five, six, ten, whatever. If you did not normalize all the rooms to a universal denominator, and you would never be able to compare performance from one room to another. And so I take his track record, uh, I triple it beyond what he has presented. Triple it. His live signals, he has an alert that comes out on weekly averages, weekly momentum, weekly price indicator. We trade it on a chart that looks like this. This happens to be for, for gold. It's the same thing for silver, weekly moving averages, weekly momentum, weekly price, Again, same type of chart. So to summarize, does he show a track record with number of contracts, final profit loss? Absolutely. Does he make at least 50000 a year? Far more than that. Does he show his trades in real time so you can see them? Absolutely. 
when I found him in 2013, this was the exact example of a global trade titan. And he had been doing it for years. I don't take any credit for finding him. I just stumbled on him. He was on page 213 or so on my search string. And he was in, you know, no one would go that far. I was so thrilled to find him. Now in 2013, right up till today. Is he patient and courteous? Yes. Is that unusual? It is. I've been in a lot of rooms that are run by drill sergeants. They're militant. They're hostile. They're argumentative. They're draconian. They're almost just very hard rooms. And that's a style, by the way. Patrick, not true. Does he trade multiple indices? Including ETFs, options, and stocks. Yes. Does he have track records for those? You bet. Will he train you and teach you and mentor you on what he knows? Absolutely. Trials? Of course. Success rate? Absolutely. So let's conclude then from this lecture. In conclusion, I want to tell you and thank you that these are my observations, my opinions, and my best understandings. Yours may be different. For the Equity Management Academy, it is one of the most accomplished trade titans I have seen and the most diverse. Some of the papers I mentioned, the Midas Touch, Live Futures Trading Rooms in Trader, in, in, uh, Trader Planet would be interesting for you to read. The 1K a day approach and using pullbacks, battered trader syndrome, and of course the Odyssey. You can get these papers at my website, which will be moving soon, but this address will work. And it's been my pleasure to present. I'll take any questions. Thank you very much.